if you've been paying attention, you've seen viral videos of producers and artists alike experimenting with AI-generated music, taking rap to a whole new level. Ghostwriter, the mastermind behind the fire collab between an AI-generated Drake and The Weeknd, is just one example of how this technology is making waves and raking in cash already. I came in with my ex, like Selena, the flex, bumping Justin Bieber. But it doesn't stop there. The rap scene is blowing up with AI-generated versions of iconic artists, both living and deceased, spitting bars like never before. Take the unknown rap group who wrote verses for Jay-Z, only to use an AI to bring them to life. Tell the young they can never become what they aspire to. Born in a cell with no one who can inspire you. Yeah. Or the mind-blowing AI-driven in Paris remix performed completely by Biggie and Tupac with B.I.G. helming Jay-Z's verses and Tupac coming in to do Kanye's bars. It's clear that AI is already revolutionizing the industry. So what does that mean for the future of rap? Is it even worth it for you to learn how to rap anymore? All of these questions and more will be answered in today's video at How to Rap. So stay tuned as we explore how AI will change rap music forever. With AI already shaping the rap landscape, you might be asking yourself, should I give up on learning how to rap? Or as a fan, should I even be checking for new artists trying to make their way in music? Surprisingly, given the state of things and where they're headed, the answer to whether you should give up on learning how to rap is definitely no. The skill of writing songs and programming them into AI will remain extremely valuable. Even if we reach a point where AI ghostwriters are crafting new albums from past legends like Tupac, there will still be a need for individuals who can write rap with the right tempo, flow, and style. Thus, if you're an expert at writing the Migos flow, you can then learn how to put it with Big Pun's voice and possibly go viral. The same goes for the Biggie and Eminem example. It might take anywhere from 5 to 10 years before AI can generate a fully fledged Tupac, Biggie, or Big Pun song based on a simple prompt, and yes, that is likely to happen, believe it or not. But for the time being, there's there's still an opportunity to make a name for yourself in the game and actually make a full-time income. The second reason not to give up on your rap development is that there's always a serious chance that people will still crave new voices and unique styles, which answers our second question in this section. While we'll discuss shortly why it's unlikely that brand new sounds will emerge in music, it's crucial to remember that new artists can still find success through different channels. Over the past 15 years, many of the biggest artists didn't rely on the traditional label system to achieve stardom. Instead, they gained traction independently and forced the labels to come to them. Therefore, there's little little reason to believe that, again, at least in the short term, new artists that embrace the coming revolution in the music industry won't succeed in some form or fashion. Again, using this guy Ghostwriter as an example, I can bet he's already raking in some serious side dough from just the publicity of his Drake and Weekend stunt. So rap could still be a viable path for you if you're passionate about rapping and committed to honing your craft. Unfortunately, there's bad news as well. While it's true that learning to rap is still worth your time. On the flip side of our previous comment, the reality is that AI technology will make it increasingly difficult for new acts to break through. Today's music listeners are different from those in the past, with a plethora of entertainment options vying for their attention. As a result, it's a much bigger ask for them to explore a new voice or style when AI can simply generate fresh content from their favorite artists, both living and dead. As listeners become more and more accustomed to AI-generated tracks from their favorite artists, both past and present, they may be less inclined to take a chance on a new voice or style. I was talking to a friend the other day about how amazing it would be to hear a 1999-era Eminem release, a new album produced exactly as a 1999 Dr. Dre would have produced it, all in pitch-perfect delivery, those classic multi-syllable almost offbeat rhymes from early Shady, and flow choices the respective artists would have chosen in that era. With AI's ability to faithfully reproduce the creative output of artists like that, when that AI Slim Shady LP2 comes out, 
It's going to be extremely difficult for a new artist to convince someone to pay attention to an unsigned new rapper than rather simply for the fan to check out the new AI Slim Shady LP too. This phenomenon isn't just limited to rap, it's likely to impact all genres of music. Picture a world where AI can produce a seamless collaboration between a young thriller era Michael Jackson and Bruno Mars, or have John Lennon cover a John Mayer hit. With such enticing possibilities at their fingertips, listeners may find it difficult to justify exploring new artists. Moreover, as AI continues to evolve, record labels and investment firms that own the masters to iconic artists' music will be able to churn out AI-generated tracks at an alarming rate. This could lead to an oversaturation of the market where old classics are rehashed and repurposed, further stifling the emergence of new talent. And this brings us to a crucial point about the music industry today. Over the last few years, big name artists have been selling their masters, the rights to their music, for hundreds of millions of dollars. Over the past few years, icons like Justin Bieber, Lil Wayne, and even Kanye West have contemplated or executed the sale of their masters for astronomical sums. However, the buyers aren't just the usual suspects of record labels or industry insiders. Instead, investment firms like BlackRock are sweeping in, looking to diversify their portfolios by adding a piece of musical history to their financial arsenals. Take, for example, the 2021 acquisition of One Republic's entire musical catalog by KKR or Colbert, Kravis, Roberts & Company, a global investment giant that controls assets spanning private equity, energy, infrastructure, real estate, credit, and hedge funds. KKR's $504 billion in client assets under management signals that they're major players in the game. And with KKR's foray into the music world, it's clear that the future of the industry may be shaped by the whims of financial giants rather than by artists, fans, or industry insiders who have traditionally called the shots. But why exactly is it dangerous for a private equity firm to own a musician's musical rights? For starters, these investment firms are primarily focused on generating returns for their investors, often prioritizing profit over artistic integrity. This shift in ownership could lead to a growing commodification of music where it's treated as just another asset to be bought, sold, and exploited for financial gain. In addition, this new landscape could allow corporations to exert undue influence over the creative process, potentially leading to AI-generated collaborations like Michael Jackson with some unknown weird artist the label's trying to push, or even dictating the political message behind a new Tupac track that he may not have agreed with in his real life. While these examples might seem harmless, the broader implications for artistic freedom and the evolution of the music industry are concerning. And that really comes down to the fact that these financial giants may lack the industry expertise and cultural understanding needed to make informed decisions about the future of music and hip-hop. This could result in the erosion of the very essence of what makes music so powerful, the authentic connection between artist and audience, and the shared experience of creativity and self-expression. To put this into perspective, consider the Star Wars franchise. Arguably the most successful movie series ever, it faltered immediately when it got in the hands of Disney when fan favorite characters like Luke Skywalker and Han Solo were killed off just within a couple movies. Spoiler alert, Disney was being run by a bunch of Star Wars universe outsiders who had just purchased the brand from Lucasfilm and so they had no skin in the game to make the story better or more realistic to what the actual fans liked which led them to completely annihilate the beauty of one of the easiest franchises to make dope in the 21st century. Thus, if the entertainment industry can ruin such a beloved and lucrative name as Star Wars, there's no reason to think they won't do the same with the careers of legendary musicians by releasing subpar AI-generated content. On the other hand, the music landscape is changing rapidly, with corporations poised to cannibalize the industry for their own gain if that's what they decide. So what's the bottom line for those looking to make their mark in a rap game? While AI is undoubtedly going to revolutionize the industry, it's essential to recognize the powerful forces at play behind the 
the scenes. As new artists navigate a world where their unique voices compete with AI-generated legends, they'll need to be even more prepared for the ever-shifting landscape and the increasing influence of big corporations on the music they create. The future may be uncertain, but one thing is clear. Adaptability, creativity, and resilience will be crucial for artists hoping to thrive in the coming age of AI. Now, if you're an artist yourself who wants to learn directly from us on how to adapt to this new environment, visit the video description and I'll see you in the comments. What are your predictions for what will happen to rap in the 2020s and 2030s during the AI revolution? I've been your host, Drew Morrissey, the big homie Drew for how to rap. I'm out.